How's it going guys? It's Sam from 3D again. As many of you might know, one of the biggest obstacles for many 3D artists comes in the form of baking. Not just because it's a technical and tedious process, or because it takes considerable computing power, but also because fundamentally it is quite a confusing concept to understand. However, today we will break down the process of baking into what it is and what the different types of baking are, so that this process can be slightly easier to understand. But first, I want to take a moment to mention 3D.Design, which is a collection of massive online libraries that can take your next project to the next level. Whether you need it for a website, an app, VR or even games, 3D.Design is the place to go. Right now, they have a lifetime deal which gives you access to all current 3D packs and all future 3D packs to come with a 60% discount, so check out this link in the description below to start saving immediately. To put it simply, baking is just setting what you have created in place. It is similar to actual baking, where you take all your ingredients and form a cohesive dough. The dough can look beautiful and uniform, however, it only becomes a final, edible product after baking has completed. In 3D, baking is named baking for a reason, because it is also taking what you have already created and turning it into a final, optimized product ready for use. Now we can take a look at four of the main types of baking found in Blender and how and why it is utilized. First off, let's look at texture baking. Why do we even need this process? It is extremely tedious and it often does not work correctly. And on top of that, for it to work everything has to be set up perfectly, otherwise it would fail miserably. Blender also has incredible procedural, node-based textures and materials, which are incredibly powerful and comes with a lot of potential for control and customization. The thing is though, these procedural shaders tend to require insane amounts of calculations and subsequently a lot of computing power. On top of this, they are not compatible with other 3D programs or game engines, or even the export file formats found in Blender, so you would not even be able to export it for use outside of Blender. It is for this reason that baking texture maps to directly match the unwrapped UVs of the target object has become the standard for most games. I know some of you might want to know what UVs even are, so let me explain. UVs are the phases that make up a 3D object, projected onto a 2D image, using predetermined sims. Think of it similarly to how the round world is projected onto a flat map. These aforementioned maps include, but are not limited to, normal, diffuse or albedo or color, roughness, ambient occlusion, displacement and metallic. Basically, all of the different material properties required for the assigned material. To do this, you would first need to create a custom UV map for the target object. Then by using Blender's built-in Cycles render engine, you need to use the baking system located in the Render Properties tab to bake out all the different maps to an assigned custom image texture. A good tutorial to watch on this process is Texture Baking for Beginners by Ryan King Arts. Then, if you want to use this object in other programs, make sure that with whatever object file you export with, the UV maps are exported as well, otherwise it will not work. Next, and probably the most difficult form of baking, is high poly to low poly baking. The reason this is done is because detailed models with a large number of polygons and possibly engons, or faces that have more than 4 points, are not optimized for animation or video games, and the standard method is to bake all the detail onto a normal map to be used with the other texture maps. The way this is done is to first retopologize the model, which is the process of recreating the model with the exact same position and dimensions, at a much lower level of detail and consequently a much lower poly count. Then the low poly model needs to be UV unwrapped, just like with the texture baking process, and it would be the same UV map mostly. Then with the two models situated in exactly the same position, and again using cycles alongside the baking system in the render properties tab, the normal map is baked onto an assigned custom image texture. A great tutorial for this process is texture bake high poly details to a low poly mesh, also by Ryan King Art. Simulation baking is an outlier among the different types of baking, as it does not use the baking drawer in the render properties tab. And every simulation type has its own way of baking, which is usually found under cache in their respective physics menus. When you create a simulation in Blender, it can be played. However, all the calculations are happening in real time while the simulation is trying to play itself. So performance in the viewport is terrible, and the resulting render will take long, and oftentimes not even work correctly. Baking a simulation fixes this error as it makes all the calculations and sets the animation in place. Because of this, you cannot change the simulation properties again without deleting the bake first. However, the animation will play much more smoothly and the render will take much less time. 
while being accurate as well. Fluid, cloth and soft body physics all have their cache tabs in their respective menus, while rigid body physics have its cache in the scene tab, under rigid body world. Fluid also has an additional option to bake particles and mesh if it is a liquid instead of fire or smoke for soft body and fluid simulations to work correctly. Objects that are interactive with in the scene need to be set to collision. A good tutorial for Blender physics is the Learn Physics simulations in Blender by Blender Tutor. Finally, we have Lightmap Baking. Probably the most straightforward one, it is right in the name. Real and accurate lighting can be very performance intensive and too much for certain games. Therefore, with lightmap baking, you can bake light interactions with certain faces of the target object, right onto image textures, very similar to how texture baking works as well. This drastically improves performance for games as well as for animations. And that is it for today's video about baking. I hope this video helped explain the concept to you and possibly even gave you a new starting point. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing so that you do not miss future helpful videos. And if you want to level up your professional business website or portfolio, consider checking out 3D.design in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.